You're listening to the Barn Restaurant Podcast, where hospitality lovers come to listen and learn with expert David DiLorenzo. Now here's your host, the DLO. All right, welcome back to another bar and restaurant podcast. Today, I have a friend of mine and also a local brewery owner slash restaurateur slash just all around good dude, John Lane. How are you, John? I'm good today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and I know I call you John, but most of your, let's just say, longtime friends call you G. Correct. Where did that come from? Mostly from college. It's yeah. just a nickname that I just, I wore a G hat. I had a couple <laughs> G hats and, you know, it's back when that music was uh, becoming, when, when hip hop and rap were becoming kind of uber popular. So yeah. it just kind of stuck. I was the big dude that always wore the G hat. And did you have gold chains or anything that go No, with it? I didn't no. have anything like that. No, not at all. No, <laughs> no. I was more of the uh, the hippie-ish uh, uh, college student, not the not the uh, uh, rap college student. Yeah, so G, G stuck with you with all your old friends and all that. That's yeah, I just carried through th- throughout the years in my industry. You know, you always know somebody. Yeah, So 100%. when they start calling you that, then the next person does, and then it just kind of snowballs. I tried a couple times to get rid of the... Uh, the moniker, but you know, it's, right. it's stuck and it's, it's there. I can't get away from it anymore. And I don't try to anymore. Well, and as everybody knows, d is mine. Yep. So, you yep. know, we just kind of live with it and enjoy it. It's funny when I search you, if I don't type d it doesn't come up in my phone. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I, I mean, literally like I have to type d If I, if I go and if I somehow put Lorenzo or, you know, if I do it in any other way or right. Dave. Yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like that. I'm kind of a, 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 I don't know, whatever it is, but, um, let's talk about from your beginning. So you born in Traverse city. Correct. Okay. Yep. And how long did you stay there? I lived in Traverse city until I was uh, roughly 10 and then I moved to Grand Rapids and then I moved back to Traverse city, um, when I was a uh, junior in high school Okay. and graduated there seven days after graduation, uh, went to San Diego, knew I couldn't get there. Um, came here, and kind of ended up here. I've lived all over, but I've, I've kind of always come back to, yeah. to the Phoenix area. Yeah. And college was where for you? ASU. It was but ASU. Yeah. Several, but ASU is where I graduated. Right. <laughs> That's where you ended up getting <laughs> yeah. that piece of paper that yeah, says, yeah, I yeah. graduated. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. And then uh, I know that uh, Traverse City is very close to your heart and you go back there. I mean, we, we'll talk and you're back there two, maybe three times a year. Oh, at least. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, more so in the, in the, in the past few years yeah. and, you know, before I was too busy, little kids, but now I have a little bit more freedom with the company because, you know, now I don't operate one or two. I, I have a team now. So, yeah. so I have a little bit more freedom, uh, to, to kind of take vacations yeah. um, where I didn't take them for many years. So, yeah. So I go back definitely in the summer for as long as I can. Normally once kind of fall or spring. And then the other time of the year just depends if there's a birthday, a wedding, a holiday, you know, something my mom wants, something yeah. Kind of all over the place. So that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and two kids, Owen, who is what he's 16. He's almost 16, almost 16 yep. now. Cool. You'll have to call me on that auto policy. Uh, I, well, I just, I got the car <laughs> that I'm giving him, but it's in, it's under me right now on USAA, but I need to figure out how to, uh, yeah. finagle that one. We'll talk about 16. that. We'll talk about that later. I'm going through that stuff. I'm, my, uh, 17 year old just got an accident. So oh. anyways, sidebar. And then you have James Violet who, she is. What, she's three. three. Yep. Yeah. Yep. She's three and a half. She'll be four not too long from now. And yeah, she's a handful. Uh, never thought I'd have more kids. And like I said, my wife now is talking possibly another child. Boom. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I'm, I'm grandpa age, but you know what? Hey, hey. we'll have fun. <laughs> what's uh, what? So, so with the age difference between, you know, your son and your daughter, what, what's that like raising both of them kind of at the same time? And, and how are they with each other? He's great with her. I mean, he just is, but he's also, you know, a teenage boy that wants to play video games and not be bothered and, and, and that, but when I need him, he's great with her. And she, I mean, all little kids, I think adore their, their older brothers and sisters, as long as they're not too close in age, Yeah, you know, then yeah. it's more wrestling and pulling hair and beating <laughs> each other up. Totally. And stuff. So, yeah. so no, they get, it's a great, it's, it's worked out very well. The time flies. I mean, I just, I remember when Carrie just had her, Oh yeah. you know, just absolutely crazy. And, and you guys have been married since 17. Uh, since 2017 or 18, 2017. Yes. Yeah. 2017. Cause we had the chat. We, we got pregnant right away. Right. So, yeah. So there's a, a little bit of a fun story on how that had all happened. How did you guys meet? Uh, she was, uh, at Oso and I knew she was sitting with a girlfriend and then I knew the couple next to him and. Um, I was, you know, I thought, well, this girl's tall and pretty. I'll go chat with her. And then the. <laughs> group next to him I knew and they just kept talking my ear off. So I didn't get a, hardly any words in with her. And she said, Oh, I liked you on Facebook. You sent me a message back. Well, 
I send everybody a message. I, I used to, I don't anymore because it became kind of generic, but I'd send everybody the thank you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And uh, so then I went back and looked and found her and sent her a message and, you know, said basically, you know, I don't do this very often, but if you're, if you'd like, I would love to take you out to dinner or, you know, and if this creeps you out, you know, please delete me. <laughs> uh, luckily we went out and she didn't agree to dinner because she's like, I don't know you. I don't want to spend that right. much time with you, but yeah. we had a cocktail and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, just slowly just kind of went from yeah, there. Went from there. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, um, relationships as we get older, as you know, can be kind of just difficult in essence because us as individuals already know who we are and what we want, you know, whereas when you're younger, you're just kind of spitballing and oh, yeah. it's happening happens. And I mean, you know, I'm very different than my wife yeah. in, in lots of ways. So I was like, at first I was like, I don't know, like she's not quite the normal, the girl that I've dated before. But you know, as we get older, like you said, you, you find things and qualities and things that you want to be closer to versus yeah. when you're younger, you're just kind of spitballing and going, well, I guess I'll deal with this, or I yeah. guess I like this, or I guess I, you yeah. Know. She's hot enough. You yeah, know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. exactly. So your, your your dad owned a banquet facility, is that correct? And and you worked in that, or so my dad owned um, a bunch of stuff. He was in um, the real estate business, but then he got into the golf business, and then they owned a banquet facility and they owned a, uh, you know, bar, a little bar and, yeah. and had a couple of them. And I worked for him for a little bit, but then that didn't go as well as it could have. Um, <laughs> working for parents is not always easy. Right. I know that you work here side by side, but I'm sure there were some difficult years early or maybe not, but no, you know. there is. And he's retired now and yeah, bought out. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, it, it kind of got me into the restaurant business in, in a way. So, yeah. um, and then I worked at a bunch of different family owned restaurants all over Michigan. So, okay. Yeah. So that kind of, did that give you the bug? At that yeah. Point? I mean, I think it kickstarted my, my, uh, my knowledge and also, you know, me wanting to learn more. Um, right. I, I mean, you know, a lot of people do what their parents do or they, they kind of levitate towards a parent sort of in one way or the other. You know, if your parents an accountant, maybe you're not an accountant, but maybe you're into some, something else that's very math oriented. Yeah. Um, and I kind of, my dad was in the service, I'll say. Right. He got out of his uh, real estate, which still was kind of service, but, and he really got into service and um, he didn't know what the heck he was doing, but you know, he, yeah. he, he winged it and did pretty good and, and then kind of got me into it. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of, it's funny cause there's a lot of similarities when I hear you speak to me in, in the essence that I didn't grow up dreaming to be an insurance agent, you know, and a lot of my friends and, and partners, they don't look at me as an insurance guy. They look at me as a hospitality guy that just happens to have a service that takes care of a, you know, a need that they have. That. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. You know, growing up and working for Warner Brothers and doing all that sort of stuff, it was like, how do I make this my own? And, and it seems like you've, you know, been able to do that, you know, for yourself as well, because after that you, uh, you were, well, w then you came out here. Was Four Peaks the first job you had out here? No, the first job I had was at, a. uh, uh Native New Yorker. Oh, okay. That was the first restaurant job I had out here. They I did a bunch of other then, things. Oh they? yeah. They had a lot of, they had like, well, I think they still have quite a few. They're just called native now. Right. Yeah. Um, they, uh, yeah, it was family run. Um, they did have a few franchises, but most of them were still, I think like four of the seven or eight at the time were family run. Yeah. Um, and I worked for the daughters. They were, they were good. They were tough, but they were, you know, fair as well. And, and it taught me, you know, kind of how to deal with all sorts of different people because the wing thing you dealt with, the richest rich and the poorest poor because wings are popular with everyone. Yeah. So it kind of taught me a little bit more about Phoenix and about Arizona and about people. Um, cause I'd always, you know, I grew up in a small town. I dealt with the same people. I didn't, you know, I didn't, there wasn't much variety, so to say of, of my clientele. Yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> it was, so it was, it was a very good job. I worked there for a couple of years. Um, then I went to, uh, uh, Balboa cafe. Oh God. Yeah. Um, down on mill Avenue. Yep. And I worked there for, Gosh, like on and off for like seven years. Yeah. And in that time period is when I worked at Four Peaks. Okay. So. And and Four Peaks gave you some good insight on breweries. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, they were the, and and the hospitality original. in general. I mean, yeah. they, they were one of the first <clears throat> places. I, I won't say one of the first, but they were a place that I worked at that really went for the customer. Yeah. I mean, they, they as much as they wanted to make money, they made things right. Okay. Um, which was good to see because a lot of restaurants, unfortunately, don't always make it right. They just kind of gloss it over and say, oh, you're, you know, 
Thank you. Right. Thank yeah. you. There, there's more people coming. Yeah. yeah. We're not. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they were really good about touching back and, and making sure everybody was happy and making sure, you know, if something was wrong, they took care of it. And, and even if something wasn't quite right, but they couldn't pin on it, they yeah. might come out with a gift card and just say, Hey, thanks for coming in. I, we can tell something's not quite right. So they weren't, I mean, <clears throat> not only were they in the restaurant business, they were in the relationship business. Yeah. They were in the people yeah. business. I mean, and most of us, I will say a lot of restaurateurs are in two different businesses, three different businesses. You're yeah. either in the restaurant and people business, you're in just the restaurant business because you're too busy, you're caught trying to just operate a restaurant or you're in the re restaurant and real estate business. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So it just kind of depends awful. how they maneuver. All really good points. Yeah. And and then after that, was that Dos Gringos? And then I went to, uh, from Four Peaks to Dos Gringos. And I also worked at a couple other like jobs and I worked at casino. Yeah. I just kind of worked all the time. Right. Um, I was trying to save up and, and, you know, eventually open up my own, but then I chose to go to the Caribbean for a couple of years or for a year and a half and then came back and went to a bunch of different restaurants and just trying to put it back together again. Yeah. So, yeah. The whole, the, the, the history or an anthology of, of John Lane, it's like, it, it's funny. It's just a lot of different experience that you had, that you had. So now you're, let's just say you're done with those gringos. You're, you're sitting here, you're scratching your head, you're pondering, you're like, okay, you know, what am I going to do now? Or did you already know what you were going to do and had an idea that Oso was going to So I gave, Oso? yeah, oh, well, I was going to do a craft beer bar. Okay. I gave him 90 days notice. Okay. I, I had no, I, I was not very, <laughs> didn't have a whole lot of money because I'd just gone through divorce. Um, uh, <laughs> so I didn't have a whole lot of money and Anyway, I, you know, I'm like, but I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to do this. And, uh, I got one partner who's no longer my partner, but great guy. Yeah. Um, we just, he just, it wasn't the business that he was in necessarily. So he didn't quite understand the long term. Um, he thought, you know, I put money in, I get money out. Well, right. that's not how restaurants work. No. Um, it takes quite a few years until you start to see that debt paid off the profitability, all that other. So anyway, <clears throat> um, we kind of just went from there and we started as a craft beer bar, but we put brewery on our name. Our first year, we didn't have a brewery because uh, I, we couldn't afford any of the equipment. So it was every year, <laughs> every month, the pressure mounted. When are they going to start brewing? And it just forced us into that, which yeah. which was our goal. Uh, but it also was very difficult to go, okay, well, I need to spend $100,000 in this room right. when I could really use new furniture, new POSs, yeah. a better oven. Uh, but, you know, but it is what we were. So we had to do it. And, and luckily, it, it went well. And, and this was... 13, 14 years oh, this ago? Is, oh, I'm sorry, say that again? How, how uh, long ago 10 years it? ago. This was 10 years ago. God, exactly. It feels like even longer. I remember being in there and like the dust on the floor. I mean, literally yeah. there was, you I guys say, were in there. I want to say my, my policy went into effect like a September 12th or 15th with you guys. Yeah. That, Cause you were the, the first person I called on like that I needed yeah, to, to make sure if done. anybody came in there and worked, I wasn't going to get screwed. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Ar Arcadia was your first location. And, yep. and and you guys were all like hand doing a lot of this stuff on your own. Yeah. Just, scraping the ceilings, doing the flooring. Yeah. I mean, back then I, I slept in the office for on and off for almost a year. Right. And I had a little kid with me. I was a, at that time I was truly a single dad. Like yep. I had him hundred percent of the time. So it was. Yeah, he's five, four or five years old. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, it was roughly five. five yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember you bringing him in the office too, and, uh, yeah. and now he's big. I'd set him up in the office with the. Uh, oh, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd set him up in our office at night because we have this big office with, it, and he'd fall asleep on a couch. Yeah, and I'd take him home if I could, if I could get home. Otherwise, we'd sleep there. Wow! <laughs> wow! Ho Hotel Oso. Yeah. Um. So. Was there always a notion? I know I know you said you put brewery on the bottom of it because you said eventually, but what was it before you started working on Oso and doing all that? Was there, do you think that in your mind there was a need for more breweries or that was a trend that was starting to happen that you wanted to get in or? Yes and no. I don't, I mean, I, I as much as I want to say, yes, there's always a need for breweries because that's what I do. Yeah. Um, I just really wanted to show people, like I'd traveled a lot and I'd had beer all over different parts of the world. And, I mean, I just fell in love with beer and, and, you know, everybody will say Belgium was, is one of their favorites. I won't say everybody, but a lot of people will say that's where right. they really experienced beer that they didn't know before. Yeah. And I had gone there, but I'd also gone to places, you know, in, in, uh, North Africa where they made just terrible stuff, but it was different. And yeah. I went to a place in, in, um, oh my gosh, in Hungary that made amazing lagers. And then I went to Czech Republic and then, you know, all these other wow. little countries and, and I just kind of fell in love with the idea of, of all these different beers. And I wanted to do this 
big, what I'll call, you know, what, what kind of what Justin uh, does now. I want to do this big craft beer bar with a small, tiny kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I know that was, some of us places don't have kitchens, but, um, but I wanted to just have this sort of condensed food menu and, and huge beer selection. Yeah. And <laughs> the condensed food menu didn't stick. Did no, it? <laughs> not at all. And, and once I, we got the space, I knew that we had to have a full blown, yeah. you know, um, full blown menu and, and, and try and create a, a, a hub for the neighborhood. Right. So, yeah. Which you did. And, and Arcadia has blown up the, the way that it has. And, yeah. I mean, it's, you know. and then the landlords were amazing. I mean, everything just kind of perfect, perfect storm. Yeah. We landed at the right time with the right landlords, with the right, you know, neighborhood. It just, it, it, it really came together very, a lot easier than I would say most businesses would have it. Yeah. And, so, and lucky and in that. When you started brewing, who was brewing your beer to, to begin with? Was it you? No, no. Well, I brewed a couple times, but no, I'm a terrible brewer. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I like to drink beer. I'm not great at <laughs> brewing it. Um, but no, I had a, a gentleman named Johan and I had an, another guy, Dave, who's still with us. Yeah, Dave. Um, so he, uh, he's kind of, he sort of took over that program and, 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 uh, Johan, I think Johan was there about nine months or so. And okay. he, he left and went elsewhere. And, um, and our, you know, we just kind of, then I've got, now I have 11 brewery staff, 12 brewery staff members. Yeah. And so it's kind of grown. Most of them have been there since the day they started. Um, we've had one, two, like three leave over the last 10 years. Um, and as we grow and obviously we move into different stores or bigger, right. bigger systems. So, yeah. And so this, the stores right now are Gilbert, Arcadia, PV, and then Frank Lloyd Wright. Correct. Yeah. For the Osos. Yeah. For the Osos. And yep. then uh, talk about some of the other locations, uh, or concepts that you have that. So we have a little O's concept. It's more my partner. Um, yeah. and, and then one of our core managers is an owner as well. It's great. Um, and then we have a new little O's coming, which is attached to Arcadia. So that'll be mostly me and my partner. Cool. Um, and that's a little bit different than anything we've done. It's going to have coffee, uh, mini donuts. Yeah. Um, so it's got more of a kind of a, um, a market vibe, um, but it does have full service out on the back patio and at the bar. And, um, but you can walk in kind of like you would walk into a modern market or an LGO or a, yeah. you know, one of those and, and get your grab and go salad, get your grab and go dip, um, get some, uh, you know, a little snacks or some That's trinkets great. or a bottle of wine to take to a party and, and, and walk out. Yeah. And it used so. to be a dry cleaner. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, and it looks like one of those old Circle Ks, you know, that you see everywhere around town. Right. Well, you, you used to see them. Now used they're all, see. most yeah. of them are gone. <clears throat> but yeah, it's uh, that one. And then we have uh, my wife and my business partner have uh, uh, PB Pine Wine, which yeah. uh, I'm, I know you're familiar with, but uh, for lack of better terms, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a Roman style pizza, but it's thin crust. So it's, you know, it's elongated um, and it's got some pasta, it's got burgers. So it's got a little bit of everything. It's a little bit more comfortable. We switched from a, a previous concept to make it more to go friendly, more uh, consumer friendly, especially with COVID. Um, yeah. Our other concept, we knew it was already kind of struggling a little bit. Um, and we knew that we were not going to be doing uh, steaks right. on the regular uh, in to go boxes. Yeah. So. And, and so speaking of COVID, because I did want to talk about this and let people know, like during, you know, the very beginning stages of COVID and, and with all the uncertainty out there, I mean, there, there's pictures of you standing out there, you know, you know, with the, with a oh, sign, sign, you yeah. know, and, and, and you protecting your employees and doing everything that you could. So tell me a little bit about that experience and how much it meant, you know, for you to be able to do all that. I, well, as for everybody, it was just tough. I mean, you're trying to keep as many people as you can, but you also understand that <clears throat> if you keep them, you could actually be hurting them Yeah. because, you know, the government had all this assistance that maybe they could do better on. So we had difficult conversation and we chose to lay off roughly every employee outside of manager, kitchen, sous chef, uh, kitchen chef, and then a few core people um, as well, and some brewer, the brewers, because we were keep we were going to continue to brew. Yeah. Um, but it was it was really difficult. But in the early days, the first the first thing that we decided was every day, if you want, as an employee, we had two locations open. You can come in and you can get a meal. Yeah. And you can get a growler or a beer because that's what we make. Yeah. So we did that the whole time uh, until we reopened. Um, but I mean, you know, and we got back a, a large percentage of those people. That's great. Um, I would say somewhere in the 65 to 75 percent came yeah. back. Yeah. A lot of them still are, aren't there at the moment. Um, and as we see with everyone, it's just a challenge with employment at, at the moment. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. And you guys did the hand sanitizer, too. Yeah. yeah we did hand sanitizer for hospitals, for um, for little organizations, schools. I mean, we did it yep. for kind of a little bit of everything. And, um, and one of the most creative things that you did that I still laugh about to this day was the toilet paper. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, leaving it all over the bar so people can come and grab it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, we were able to. Luckily, right at the beginning, we were able to order our orders, and we never really we had a little issue at one point. But I mean, we were able to. Our supplier was able to supply us the whole time. That's almost. great. Yeah, they go to Oso and there'd be this surplus of toilet paper, so if people needed it, they could <laughs> just go in there and get it. Um, no, very cool. Another, another thing I, I really want to talk about, um, and, and I know that you've been doing this for the last four years and it's the 1-800-273-TALK and I have a, um, on the podcast, you can, you can hear the sign, uh, <laughs> but or you can see it on YouTube. But anyways, this is a really, really cool thing that I want you to, to talk about and, and sure. share, um, because it's, it's, it's important and, uh, I, you know, I want to get the word out there. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, uh, a local business owner, uh, he owns uh, part of uh, Get Your Taco, um, kind of brought this to me about five years ago. We discussed it um, about doing something for uh, AFPS um, uh, to to kind of just say, hey, you know, let's let's donate, let's do something, let's you know get some awareness. So we talked about it. We did it with uh, with him only the first year because we did it in a small batch from Arcadia. Yeah. And the next year we did it with another and another. And now we do, you know, there's probably about a hundred partners every year now. We're hoping to grow it again. I mean, it's not about, um, you know, some people say alcohol and suicide obviously are not a good match to talk together. Um, but it's what we do. Yeah. So if I can bring awareness, get somebody to talk to anybody, yeah. I mean, it's huge. I've had a lot of friends, our industry, a lot of industries, you know, unfortunately, and have suicides in them. Yeah. Um, my industry is young. So a lot of times the suicides that happen in my industry are, are is younger in age of people. Um, are, they're really young. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them are under 30. Some of them are under, you know, most are under 40 in my industry that are doing this. And it's, it's just a terrible thing. That's, that's, if we can get one person to call this number 100%. and if I don't, if I have a question, I can call this number. Yeah. So it's, it's for me, it's, it's also a tool. A lot of people don't know that. Right. Um, that they can use it as a tool to say, Hey, I think I have a friend, you know, how should I, what can I approach? How should I approach what, you know, what, what are big no nos that you would say? Like, and you, you might get different answers, but at least they're giving you sort of a guidance, you know, in yeah. a way. So, yeah. so it was really important to me. Um, I've, I, last night we were talking, I was out with some friends from college that I haven't seen in years. Um, and we were talking about some of our friends and uh, unfortunately three of our really good friends, uh, all committed suicide. Yeah. Um, I've lost some super talented people. Like, uh, one of the, <clears throat> this guy that was, that I worked with at dose, he was probably one of the best artists. I mean, he showed and he sold most of his art for so, anywhere from five to $20,000. Wow. And he was a young kid and he just, you know, he just, I, and nobody knew because he seemed so positive and vibrant on the outside, but he was apparently, you know, dying on the inside and, and, yeah. and it was, and, and it was tough. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely something that we need more attention towards, you know, with this and and and, and other things that really have a, a a bad effect on people, you know, whether it be you know certain addictions or you know suicide and stuff like that. And and this is what needs to fill people's news feeds is the awareness of this sort of stuff. And and you know, we take care of our physical self. I see you every day taking care of your physical <laughs> self. I also see yeah. you, unlike a lot of people, taking care of your mental health. Yeah. So many people don't take care of mental health. They right. take care of their physical health. They take care of their, their, I'll, I'll say their, their family's health. They, yeah. you know, but they really ignore their, their mental health Yeah, until and it's so far gone in, in one do. way or another that they don't know where to, yeah. how to recover. Yeah, no, that's great. I, th obviously this will be something that you guys will continue for. And I know a lot of breweries are starting to participate and brew their own beer, you know, towards it as well. And, yep. and I think that's amazing. Um, now, I know you're not a, a big bragger, but um, before I get into some fun questions with you, I do want you to talk about a little bit about the awards that you've gotten for your beer and, and how, you know, basically where you're at now, you know, with the brewery and, and, and the beers and stuff. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I haven't gotten any awards. My brewers Right. Have. Your brewers. Yes. Um, our, I, I mean, our brewers have every year seem to just improve just enough. And one of the things with our brewers is if they want to take a class, if they want a book, if they want to... Um, if they want to go to a seminar, if they want to, you know, whatever, I'm all for it. Yeah. There's a budget for it. Awesome. We have it. Let's, if you learn and you know, one of the guys is like, well, you know, to be honest, I, I might be taking another job. I'm like, well, I already signed you up for the class. So go ahead and take it. It's That's on cool. me. Even if you leave, um, that knowledge piece, I mean, just like anything, you don't want to do a job. You don't want to do, you don't want to live a life where you're not learning. Right. Um, and these guys have learned so much over the years that it took our beer from being, and I will say pretty mediocre. 
Um, and our cores are our cores. That's what they're there for. They're there to be every day. Yeah. But the beers that they have fun with, they've advanced so much in them. And some of them are just amazing. This, this year we won uh, a... Uh, I should know the silver medal okay. um, for a lager. Yeah. Uh, last two years ago, not the COVID year because COVID year this skipped all the awards. We won two medals, um, which was great, an IPA and uh, and a uh, fruited beer. Um, so it's it's really good to see for them. Yeah. You know that they're that they're extra work, they're extra time, they're they're you know it could be something as simple as one degree in temperature or you know, a, a lower pitch or a, or, a, or higher pitch, you know, just different things they do with their beer. Yeah. And it's advanced it that much. It's so, science. Yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy. I mean, yeah. and to, to see them, how happy they are when they win. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like your kids. I, you I know? Th- well, I think that's the fun part for you. It's the passion of seeing people that you are associated with succeed. And, oh, yeah. and obviously, you know, the business succeeds and it's all, you know, part of that embryo, but that's, that's very cool. Yeah. 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 It's it. And I would say that's in general, like, uh, Paul yeah. just opened up his own place. I, I love Paul. Yeah. I, I went down there and, you know, it's, it's really awesome to see somebody go, you know what? I can do this. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if they have questions, by all means, I'm, I'm an open, but, but you do you. And if I can help you in any way, let me know. I love it. You, so. you salt of the earth. All right. I got some fun questions for you. There's cool. no right or wrong answers. <laughs> um, <laughs> would you, uh, if you were to do it over again, would you rather open a restaurant or a brewery? Probably a restaurant. I'm more of a restaurant guy. I mean, I lean yeah. restaurant, um, but that's a tough one because I love brewery and beer. Yeah. Um, but I've always been a restaurant guy. You know, I grew yeah. up in a restaurant. I'm, I'm, I'm a restaurant guy. I grew up in a little bar in Michigan, basically, when I was a little kid, but that was a tiny little restaurant. And I still go to it when I go home. Um, so it was kind of, it's called the U and I lounge. It's in downtown Traverse <laughs> city. It's a dive bar. Um, but anyway, uh, I would have to say yeah. probably, I just lean just a little bit more that way. Everybody makes fun of it. Like if I were to go out of the company that we would become Oso bar and grill <laughs> because the, because brewing equipment is so expensive. Well, it's not too late. Right? <laughs> um, okay. Would you rather have donuts or moon pies? Donuts. Okay. I'm a donut guy. Yeah. yeah. They have good donuts in uh, Michigan. Oh, yeah. So we're opening a little mini donut place with all the crazy toppings. Oh, so basically it's like the, I don't know, uh, Baskin Robbins Cold Stone of donuts. So is it the little O's? So there'll be little donuts? O's, little, yeah. little donuts. But they're, these ones are medium size. They're not the tiny ones. Okay. They're, they're about medium. They're about half the size. And then we've got, I, I, we have a menu of about 20 different donuts you can order. Oh, that's funny. They're roughly, a do- we haven't decided exact price because we don't know the exact cost yet yeah. on everyone, but roughly $1.50 a piece um, because they got, you know, M&Ms and oh, birthday geez. cake toppings and all these crazy, like we have one that's hot Cheeto dust and uh, lemon, like it's, they're all a little funky. You've heard it first. Donuts. <laughs> Here we come. Um, Michigan or Arizona? I would always have said Arizona. Uh, and I probably would just because of the weather. Yeah. Um, if I could do Michigan all summer and Arizona, then I would be live in a perfect world almost. It's like a tie. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dos Equis or Corona? Ooh, that's tough. I, I worked at a bar <laughs> that served the most Corona in the U.S. So <laughs> um, nowadays I would probably choose Dos Equis. Yeah. Um, but for many, many years, I loved shoveling Coronas yeah, over yeah. the bar. Yeah. So, so well, Dos Equis is like a craft beer. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, um, mayo or hot sauce? <laughs> that's tough. I like both. Um, I'm going to go with Ryan Sandlin, who owns uh, Dark Sky Brewery, <laughs> and I'm going to go with mayo. Oh, I love to see the post mayo. on that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a big mayo guy, me either. Um, Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot? Ooh. Nessie or Bigfoot? Gosh. Well, I'm going to go. I like water a lot more, so I'm going to go with Nessie. Okay. Yeah, Nessie, <laughs> Nessie's cool. Fish or the Grateful Dead? Well, that's real tough, but I am going in two weeks to go see fish in Santa Barbara. Yeah. I would say fish nowadays. You know, I, I worked for them back when I worked at Warner Brother Records. And oh, really? They were on one of the labels that we worked for, and I would literally take those guys to their shows. And, oh, you know, wow. They, they play Gibsons. I mean, that's how, yeah. Fish. Oh, yeah. Well, I saw them, at, uh, I saw them outside. Yeah, in outside. The, in the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. I yep. saw him there. I saw, yeah, I've seen him. I, I've now probably seen close to as many fish shows as I've seen Grateful Dead. Um, so, yeah. Um, Motley Crue or White Snake? Ooh. I think I'd prefer White Snake, but Crue is, man, they were, yeah. they were. 
I know you listen fire. to the Boneyard. I they know your daughter running. listens to the Boneyard now. <laughs> it's funny this this morning. Uh, what's the song? Uh, it's actually in the movies. Heart. I don't know. It's one of their. It's it's yeah. it's a band that I would never have thought was like had this heavy of a set, but they were. We listened to it this morning. She was like, "Daddy, you've got to turn on Queen Barb." which is the Trolls movie. And, yeah. and she likes metal because of the Trolls movie. That's amazing. Uh, last question. Pro sports or college sports? College. Yeah. All day. Yeah. All day. I, I mean, pro soccer. Um, I do watch a lot of pro soccer, but um, definitely college and everything else. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, where can everybody find you online? This and that. I mean, I would, I would assume Oso has got all their own Instagrams and. Oh yeah. Yeah. And if, and, if, and if anybody needs anything from me, I mean, they can email me. It's, it's super simple. It's J O N at Oso Look at that. Um, I, I generally, I used to give out my phone number. I try not to do that too much anymore. Yeah. Um, Cause I get about a bazillion calls a day, but, right. uh, but yeah, if, yeah, yeah. And if I can ever help anybody or if anybody ever has any questions in my field that thinks because I have the brewery piece and the restaurant piece, please reach out and let me know. That's I'm always willing to go up and at least do a walkthrough and explain cost. Yeah. Some people don't understand that part of it. They understand everything about it, but when you get a final cost in a brewery, double it. Yeah. Yeah. At least. Well, especially in this day and age. Um, that's, uh, that's amazing, John. Thank you. And it's so cool to have you here and be able to share your story. And, uh, hopefully, you know, um, everybody that listening, um, you know, has enjoyed the podcast and if you can go on and give John or me a five star, that would be amazing. But, uh, yeah, thanks for coming. And, uh, dude, I look forward to all the other cool stuff that you're going to be doing here in the future. Awesome. Thanks for having yeah, me. Dino. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. The par- podcast is sponsored by myself, Barn Restaurant Insurance. So anyways, till next time, peace. <laughs>